A few months ago I shared with you all that I was starting to work on my project to use up my spare or scrap bits of yarn by knitting a Hexipuff blanket. The Beekeeper's Quilt has been on my to knit list for a long time, but I was really intimidated by it because the thought of knitting that many hundreds of Hexipuffs by hand was just overwhelming. Then I was watching one of Claude's on her channel Retro Claude's uh, stash busting videos and she mentioned that she figured out that a Hexipuff is just the toe and heel of a sock put together, which sparked the idea that I could potentially make one of these Hexipuff blankets on my CSM. So when we last left off, I had just figured out how to make a Hexipuff on my CSM and the fact that it was quite a bit quicker than knitting it by hand. And my plan was just to knit a few of these here and there every few days on my CSM as I got to it. And a few of you mentioned that you'd like an update once I've made a little bit of progress on my Hexipuff blanket. So a little bit of a challenge for me has been that over the last few months, months and with the holidays and things I have been back and forth quite often between my house and my parents house and I've packed up and taken my knitting machines with me and just the effort of unpacking packing repacking means that I didn't really get a chance to actually sit in front of anything any of them and make anything so I wanted to take today to just sit down and crank out a few hexi puffs and really just enjoy these scrap bits of yarn that I've used up from different projects and remember what I had used them for. I think that's another lovely bit of this blanket is that you get to kind of reminisce on the original projects that the yarn came from. So let's go sit down at my CSM, hopefully remember how to make a hexi puff and let's get through a few of them and we can turn these into a cozy blanket. I am really excited to get started again on some more hexi puffs. I have here you can just sort of see bits of it in frame. My antique CSM, so this one is probably from the 19 teens, 1920s. It's an auto knitter. I love it so much. It's gorgeous. Yeah, I'm just kind of feeling a little like I want some cozy, slow crafting time today. And I think this is going to be the perfect little project to work on. So let's go ahead and get cast on and started on some more hexapuffs. <laughs> As we're working through these hexi puffs, I wanted to take a moment to introduce you to the sponsor of this week's video, Craftsy. If you haven't heard of Craftsy before, it is your online resource for all things creative, offering in-depth and fun courses on a wide range of creative subjects from knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, photography, baking, cooking, and so much more. I have been working on writing up my next sweater pattern and I had quite the stressful experience last time with the grading, but I I feel so much more at ease and confident about it because I actually took a few of the classes that are offered on Craftsy about pattern design and pattern grading. It was the perfect class to get my confidence back to start writing up my next sweater pattern. Can you guess which one it is? Even if you're not a knitwear designer, I think there are plenty of classes that you all might enjoy. No matter where you may be in your knitting or crocheting journey, I think there are classes for any level out there that would be informative and helpful for you. I knit Combination Continental I've had some questions about that as well and I have a hard time explaining it sometimes but there is actually a course on Craftsy called Knit Faster with Combination Knitting and it's wonderful because it not only goes over the mechanics of how you do combination knitting but it goes over what I think is the most important part which is how you have to adapt a little bit to commercial patterns if you knit this way. If Craftsy sounds like something that you would like to join then the first 1,000 of you to click the link in the description below will get a full year of a premium a membership to Craftsy for only $1.49. Thank you again so much to Craftsy for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to making some more Hexipuffs. 
So I've spent a little bit of time making some more hexi puffs and I have I have quite a few. A lot of them started out on my CSM and things kind of went sideways. There is some adjusting I think that my CSM needs to go through because it has been in storage, packed away. I didn't pack it quite properly. Again, <laughs> I'm having these problems with my machines because I need to pack them away and then I accidentally don't pack them correctly so I need to adjust it and I do I love working with my knitting machines and I love adjusting them it's just like right now the hexi puff is supposed to be that like fun little in-between project so I don't really have the oomph to go do like an overhaul on my antique CSM I will it's just like not at this moment I'm not I'm not feeling it, unfortunately. So instead I was thinking, I, I did a few by hand and they are really fun to knit by hand. It's like a perfect little portable project. But I remember someone commenting on my last video that they did it on their flatbed machine. Now I originally had the thought, if you have a flatbed machine with a ribber attachment, you can actually knit in the round on your flatbed machine. You can knit socks in the round on your flatbed machine because you can do settings on your carriages so that you basically are knitting across your ribber only and then across the main bed only and then across the ribber only and then the main bed only. So it becomes like a circular knit piece because when you knit the hexi puff by hand you're knitting them circularly so I was like oh I'll do it like that and I had thought through like a pattern and everything and just on a whim I decided to look up if anyone else had written up that pattern because I was like I literally I dreamt about it last night I've been thinking about how to do that and I did not find that version of the pattern but I did find hold on I want to get this right Ruth Riddiker or Riddiker in 2016 created a pattern for the hexi puffs on just a main bed knitting machine. And I I was kind of like, oh my gosh, of course, because it's just, it's knit in the exact same way that I was doing it on the CSM, because on the CSM, I wasn't knitting the hexi puff in the round, I was knitting it flat. So of course you could just do that on the main bed. So I think for the next few ones, I'm just going to practice doing it on my flat bed and then see how far I can get with that, see how comfortable I feel about that. Maybe I will try to make my own like in the round version of the pattern. And really quickly, as I'm looking at this, look at this. This is my first little flower done. It's a little floppy because I haven't attached it to anything else. So I'll just leave it right there. It is, it is so soft. I love these yarns. These are, I made some socks out of these. I have decided because I've been following Retro Claude, she was the whole inspiration for this in the first place. And she has been doing the English paper piecing flowers out of her hexi puffs as well. I think her plan is to make like accent flowers and then take some pretty neutral colored yarn to fill in the space in between to make more of like that, one would think of it as like the traditional English paper piecing flower quilt. I think for mine, I'm just gonna go put flower against flower because my thought process is, I don't know that I'll ever be finished with this because this will be like a perpetual way for me to use up scraps. So there'll never be a point where I'm like, okay, this is the filler, color of hexi puffs that I'm going to use. I'm always going to be adding to it so I think this might be the best way to kind of create that design and right now I have a lot of yellow yarn so I can have each of the flowers have a yellow center but it's not required and it can evolve over time. Anyway I'm very excited. Let's try out the pattern that I've been using this whole time on my circular machine anyway on my flatbed machine and see how that goes. Okay, so here is what half the hexi puff is looking like right now. Now, I think you can kind of see the hexagonal shape if I hold it open. It's a little hard to see, but this is, I mean, I think I'm following the instructions correctly, but this would require a lot more sewing up than I've done previously. So let me show you what I did. These are some hexi puffs that I made on my CSM and I still made them knitting flat on my CSM, but basically I think right now what I'm doing is I'm knitting this bit and then I would knit 
that bit again and I'd have to sew around all of the edges to finish up the hexi puff and I don't really like sewing things up, that's my least favorite part. Versus how I did it on the CSM is I started at 20 and then I did a heel and a toe together and then I graft it together in the back, which I think personally is a bit more of what I want to do. Although <laughs> if you've done this pattern before, let me know because maybe I am interpreting it incorrectly, but I think I'm going to go back to making them how I made them on my CSM. Hi, it's editing me here. And I just, as I was watching this footage, I had a thought pop in my head. I reread the pattern and I realized I interpreted it wrong. And this would be a really interesting way to make a hexi puff. So let me see if I can explain it, especially to some of you who might not be machine knitters. But those of you who are, I hope that you kind of get what I'm saying and you can look at the pattern and you can hopefully see what I missed. But at this point, rather than knitting the exact same thing again on the knitting machine, where you'd have like two hexagons in a row that you'd have to fold over and sew on the sides, when you're increasing for the second time, you're picking up those stitches that are on the end of that hexi puff right there each time. So you're hanging your work again. You're working into your previous work. So as you're knitting, you're kind of sewing up the sides, which would leave you with a hexi puff that is knit from the bottom or I guess from the top to the bottom and back up but with a side sewn together, a pocket at the top that you can then stuff and close just like you did with the hand knit ones. You're not knitting it around, you're knitting it top down back up, but you're sewing, sewing in the sides at the same time. So you don't have to do any of that additional sewing. Ah, maybe I'll have to do that in my next video <laughs> when I update you again on these hexi puffs. I've now discovered, I guess, three separate ways to make hexi puffs. Although uh, the one where you do knit the heel and the toe, not in the round, but flat. So the one I did in my CSM, that first one that I'm showing, definitely my least favorite, I think. <laughs> Ah, sometimes it's interesting to go back and look at this because you do get moments of clarity. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Now that I'm here <laughs> and I've tried this out and I, I don't want to do it this way and I've already done it this way just on my CSM, maybe, maybe let's try it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll try it. And when I say let's try it this way, what I'm trying to say is knitting it in the round on the flatbed machine, mimicking exactly what I do with my hand knitting. So this is where you start from the bottom and you knit all the way up with the increases on both beds and then all the way to the top with the decreases on both beds. So this is fully circular knitting it exactly like you would be making these hexi puffs hand knitting. That's what I mean by this. I wasn't very clear. Obviously this day my brain was not very clear. Okay, so let's try that method which I was convinced at the time I was the first person to discover. <laughs> pretty excited because it's not a whole one. I, I was running out of yarn of this one, but I think I'm doing it. Do you kind of see that? I think that's working. Tell me if I'm wrong. It might not be new, but I might have figured out a new way to do hexi puffs on a double bed knitting machine. If you have one, uh, this could be a really cool way of doing it. And let me figure out maybe how to write this up in a pattern because I promise you if I walk away from my machine right now and come back in a few hours, I'm gonna forget everything I did. Nutella is currently checking you guys out. She gave you a lovely little boop. Nutters, who is that? Who is that? Okay, maybe she wants to go for a bit of a walk, so I'll do that first. I think that's a yes, right? Okay, so we'll go on a walk. Do you want to go on a walk with me? Do you think that would be fun? Ready? Set?
Things have been going generally smoothly with the new Hexipuff design. It turns out that there is someone who's thought of this before. Oh, hold on, let me do the squeaky thing so it's not bothering you guys. It was originally written in German and then translated into English. So if you want to follow that pattern, I will link it down below. I think that's so cool to have another resource like that. I just stopped because unfortunately I had the stitches pop off because I just wasn't concentrating, but I could do like a really long chain of them. The pattern that is written online is basically like one after the other hexi puffs. So you make the beekeeper's quilt in long strips of hexi puffs. I have decided you can also just basically put some waste yarn in between and then start the next one. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I've just had a long day <laughs> doing like government office paperwork type stuff. And I'm my brain is, I don't think, with it enough to work on the technical parts of this, either hand knitting it or knitting it on the machine. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Hexipuff I finished here and the ones that I've previously finished on my CSM, and I'm going to do some stuffing of them, sewing them together, and then sewing the Hexipuffs into the start of my beekeeper's quilt. So why don't we do that and hopefully have a bit more of a relaxing time doing that together. I've been sitting in front of my flatbed knitting machine making more of these hexi puffs. You want to come up? Hop. Yeah, hi. Thank you. Okay. Cuddle break. <laughs> I don't mind at all. Was I saying? Right. So I have made hexi puffs three ways, I guess. By hand, uh, with my circular knitting machine by making a full heel and toe, and now with my flatbed knitting machine, knitting it in the round, but not making it like a heel and toe, instead mimicking exactly what I'm doing with my hand knitting. I, I do like the double bed flatbed machine the best, the, the one that I basically learned how to do this time. It has, I think, the neatest edges. The circular knitting machine also makes very nice hexi puffs, but I find making a heel and toe the most stressful part. And so it's just continuous heels and toes, and that's very stressful to me. At least when I do it, I tend to drop the stitches the most, so that makes me nervous when I do it. It also means that I have to do more complicated finishing. I have to do grafting stitches versus just doing a three needle bind off, which is 
in my opinion, or at least in my experience, much, much easier and much quicker and much more brainless. Like I can just sit and watch a show and do it. So I have quite a few of these puffs to finish off. And I think I've already showed you how I finished them off. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn all of these into um, the little hexagonal flowers. Also, this looks like a really cute scarf. Nutella, what would you think of this as a scarf? Kind of looks like a snake. What do you think? How do you feel about that? I don't think you care much as long as I'm petting you. <laughs> you are so, so tolerant. Thank you. Let's finish them off. And then let me show you what my Hexi Pup blanket looks like so far. We'll do a little bit of a fun reveal. But before we take a look at my current version of the Beekeeper's Quilt, if you're enjoying videos like this and you like crafting, especially fiber crafting, if it's historically or vintage inspired, feel free to subscribe. Nutella often steals the show and we love her very much. <laughs> and let's go take a look at this quilt as it is now. I'm so pleased to look at my Hexi Puff blanket right now. It's such a really squishy combination of hand knit ones, ones I made on my CSM, ones I made on my flatbed machine, but I still obviously have another method of making these to try out because I didn't figure it out correctly this time, so this is another one that I can try out in the future. Let me know if you'd be interested in another Hexi Puff update. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again really soon. Bye!